let's do some news. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is December 11th, 2020. The time is 3.28 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Or is it Daylight Savings Time? PDT? It's PST, right? It's three something on a Friday, as usual. And today we're going to cover the Game Awards. Now, every year, for at least one year, we've covered the we've covered the game awards after the fact and we've ridiculed it and we've said that boy they're just they're just not representing us very well at all right every single year we get in there or at least one year and today today is uh, is is uh, is uh, a little bit different just a little bit because the sweetest chef is coming to overcooked wow <laughs> the biggest announcement of the night can you believe it Whoa! Yeah, so the Swedish Chef's coming to Overcooked. There's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, big hype. <laughs> it's the biggest announcement that we've got. There is a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot of announcements that went out last night. So what we're going to do today is we're going to cover... <laughs> we're going to cover uh, the announcements, the notable mentions, and all that stuff. And then we're going to go over the actual awards itself. Instead of starting with the awards and then going into everything else. We're going to build up to that. Right, you guys already probably seen it. You guys already know the answers and everything, but you know we're gonna go over it that way. So, you want to meet? Well, sorry. Uh, what do they do to the arms? What do they do to the arms? Hold on a second. What do they do? The oh. <laughs> I didn't notice that. All the characters have like little floaty hands like that, though. So, not all of us. That's right. That's why I'm here, Victor. I'm here to to set you all straight, get you all, get everybody on the same page, all that good stuff. So. First, I should mention, like an honorable mention for myself. Hold on a second. I'm going to try my fan. There we go. Warframe is going to Epic, which is hilarious because Digital Extremes is basically Epic. <laughs> Digital Extremes, the, the cast and crew that made Unreal Tournaments is going back to Epic where Unreal Tournament basically came from, uh, and they're bringing with them Unreal Tournament skins for their weapons, which I thought was awesome. As as a uh, as a classic Warframe player, Warframe Classic, that's a thing, right? Back back when they had the real shitty weird tree, um, I am I am actually a little excited about this. It's just skins. It's just skins, but still. There's little details here that maybe not everybody will notice, but when you look at the shotgun, which we're showing right here, and we pause it right, boop. So what are you doing with this stuff? Look at that here. Uh, the shotgun in um or the flak or cannon, sorry, uh, in Unreal Tournament has uh, shoots pellets that have little smiley faces on them, right? They're little smiley faces, like have a nice day smiling, and they've updated, they they've kept that, so they. They are paying attention to some some detail here. The shape has changed of it, so that's a little, a little concerning. But uh, but no, like they they put in they even put in the shock rifle. Actually, let's go for it a little bit. And it just the way it shoots is uh, well, I mean it's a skin, but still, the shock rifle shock rifle has a um, internal tournament has what's called shock combo, where you shoot like a ball of energy out, then you shoot the ball and it explodes. And so it looks like they're just going with just like exploding, you know, pellet or projectile or whatever. Anyways, um, this was definitely like major honorable mention for me as somebody who's a big Unreal Tournament fan and also a Warframe fan and a Rebecca fan. I think we'll bring this up first. Uh, it's about time some of the weapons just are just rips from UT. Yeah, dude, just bring it. Just fucking bring it. The shock rifle looks better here than it ever did in UT. Yeah, it does look pretty sick, actually. <laughs> That's true. Let's take a look at it. It does look really good. Like that is a sexy rifle. Yeah, no, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Whoops. I'll give you that for sure. Um, so yeah, Warframe's coming to Epic, uh, and it's bringing with it a whole bunch of skins, three skins actually. Um, let me see. We had this is this is this is uh let's I'm gonna skip around a little bit. Let me see. We had uh a premiere for a game called. Sound familiar to any of you guys? And that? One of the hardest games. One of the hardest games is getting a sequel. 
and uh, you know, and obviously a, a graphical overhaul. Ghosts and Goblins uh, Resurrection is coming back, and uh, this aesthetically, I'm really on the fence, man. This looks like they're really going the whole hand drawn route, right? Uh, straying away from the pixel stuff. Uh, it looks to me a little strange for for Ghosts and Goblins, but at the same time, it's been a while since I played. But I will tell you, though, that the original was insanely difficult. Like crazy. So, uh, your, kind of, your type of game? Yeah, uh, I love the back in the day. Yep, I'm not a fan of the Flash. Yeah, like two of you guys basically call it a Flash game at the same time. Yeah, aesthetically, it definitely feels a bit weird to me. It definitely feels a bit weird to me. Um, so... I mean, it's coming to Switch. You know, it might be something to pick up just to play or whatever. But aesthetically, very strange uh, choices there. Uh, we are also getting... A Super Meat Boy. <laughs> so, you can see in this video, and you know what's funny? It looks, it looks like Super Meat Boy right now. I, I haven't played Super Meat Boy in so long, so again, like when you look back at like old games, and you, you, you have like those rose tinted goggles, and you're just like, wow, it looks so beautiful, and then you go back, you play, like, what the hell was I thinking? Um, I do think that these are significantly upgraded graphics because these look more cartoony and not less pixely um but they do showcase a bunch of new like attacks or moves or something a lot of this stuff obviously helps with movement and all that lots of like throwing lots of whatever um the playable character his his uh his girlfriend uh what's her name band-aid girl or something like that um is also is is, is showcased in there but i think she's available in super meat boy like ultimate or something like that like maybe in a content update or something um <clears throat> this is finally getting released. Yeah, it's got a release date, and that is... Oh, I don't know what the release date, actually. <laughs> it's at the end. 12-23-20. So, for Christmas. For Christmas. Um, we also have... Mm, do, 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 do. <laughs> sure, you guys probably seen this one, but let's go and play this one out. I haven't seen this one entirely yet. Sure. It's an honor. Hey, Sarge, did you hear? Oh, I guess you already got the news. What news? Master Chief is coming to Fortnite. A fort what now? It's only one of the most popular video games in the world, but more obviously, it's where we are right now. Huh. Wait a minute. If you had no idea that we're in Fortnite, then why do you have a cardboard cut out of Master Chief? Perfectly regular reasons. Whoa. You guys new around here? No! The Chief got eliminated by a sneaky blue! That's no blue! That's... That's Ninja! It's such an honor. I I'm a huge fan of yours on Twitch. This hurts Is and it's funny at the same time. Blue? Stop making us look bad in front of Ninja. We're Sergeant Griff from the popular web series Red vs. Blue. You probably watched it about 10 years ago. What are you doing here? Well, it's more than just the Chief coming to Fortnite. This map is too. It'll be in creative mode starting at... All right, so that's it. <laughs> this it's It hurts! It hurts, but at the same time, it's like... I always think about what games I want to introduce to my kid, right? It's like, what games do I want to, like, what game am I going to show him next? I've already got him heavily into Minecraft, right? I already got him heavily into Terraria. Uh, he's he's played a number of other, like, small games here and there, right? Uh, and so it's like, this is just Epic and Mac Microsoft just doing, doing dad's work, you know? Introducing their kids to, uh, or kids to... <laughs> Cringa, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Introducing their kids to Master Chief and all that stuff. And this is, <clears throat> I would say, pretty um, interesting, interestingly timed. I actually wonder when this was uh, slated to get started for development and, or when it was like projected to get started for development because um, we know that Halo Infinite, or the next Halo installment, has been delayed a lot. It was supposed to be a launch title. Then they had a bunch of like a uh, bunch of rewrites and a bunch of restructures or whatever. Uh, new, I think the new like game uh, 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 lead or something. There's just been a lot of stuff going on uh, with uh, you know with, with the with production, and so <clears throat> I wonder if this was supposed to be a tie-in to to go ahead and and further promote the game being released on the Xbox, the new Xbox. So. They decided just to go with it, or if this is just a way just to kind of keep keep uh, keep the Master Chief in uh, you know in 
in the hands of, of, of kids who are going to tell their parents that they need to buy the new Xbox or whatever. It is interesting times. Isn't Kratos? Yes, Kratos is in. And actually, somebody actually put Kratos uh, in, put a video out showing both of them together, like dancing or something like that. And they're like, the console wars is over. So yeah, uh, there's basically everything in Fortnite, <laughs> including Blood Gulch now. He needs to take over the, what's that? It hurts, it hurts, but yeah, it makes sense. Exactly, exactly, Draven. Yeah, it hurts. Oh, it's so painful, but it also kind of makes sense. Um, Turtle Rock. Turtle Rock is back. These are the guys that made a game called uh, um, um, Evolve, which we played a bunch. Also made another game that a lot of you guys are familiar with called uh, Left 4 Dead. They're back with a new co-op shooter that's called Back for Blood. And we'll fast forward a little bit to some action. <clears throat> There's no gameplay in this, no no gameplay in this, but uh, it does it does fall in line with what you'd expect for them to do with uh, with a title like this. Uh, I would say there are no better hands <laughs> to make a Left 4 Dead like. Uh, there is no better than the people who made Left 4 Dead and Evolve. Really, Evolve was a solid uh, playing game. It just didn't really you know take off uh, the whole lopsided one v four thing. Uh, it is, it's, it's, uh, what, what, a Left 4 Dead 3? Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, obviously, probably never going to happen now if, uh, if this is happening, or maybe it will in the future, but, uh, not anytime soon, that's for sure. Uh, we also got a note for, uh, Near Replicant coming out now. Now, this game, I feel kind of bad because, you know, when I watch videos of Near Automatica, Automatica. Um, it's like, that's totally a game I would play. And Hohan, I think, Hohan, you hooked me up with the game a long time ago. And I still haven't played it, and that's totally my fault. Um, I have to play this game. Like, I have to, the, the first one, or the, the last one, I should say. Uh, because it really is totally in my wheelhouse. Bullet hell, man. It's a bullet hell. How many of these games have I played? So, yeah, Near Replicants, April 23rd, 2021. You said Left 4 Dead was Left 4 Dead? Yeah. <clears throat> we had, let's see, what else? We also had so many hours pre-rip. Yeah, 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 no, I know. I know it's definitely an investment of time for sure. Uh, we also had, are any of you guys familiar who Stephen A. Smith is? This might just be a me thing. Um, but I am, uh, we got to watch an ad on Twitter now. Uh, but no, I am definitely a fan of, uh, not necessarily a fan of Stephen, of, of just what he's commenting on, like sports in general. But I am a fan of just him, right? I follow an account called the uh, SAS Burner account or something, SAS Burner, and it's just so many. He's just a personality. It's the same way, like, like you know, I, I think Dr. Disrespect is a funny personality, but I don't really care for his content, right? So he actually had, he actually came on board and he said a couple things about esports here, which I thought was pretty good. Take and the new ESPN Plus show, Stephen A's World, Stephen A. Smith. I know what y'all are thinking. Did they just bring Stephen A. Smith to the Game Awards in an effort to legitimize esports as something equal to athletic sports? Nah, that's not the point. They're doing their thing. When every major sports league in the nation shut down, esports just kept on going. With that being said, I'll say this much. All of the esports athletes nominated are without question more determined, more tenacious, and definitely win more than anybody on the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> to announce the winner. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but, uh, so, this is a character. This is the account, by the way. If I could just pimp this guy's account, because it's just so goddamn funny. Uh, it's just basically, if you if you just want to vaguely follow American sports, you got to follow this account. You got to follow this account. Throwing that shit out. Oh, he's so good. He's not wrong. Yeah, no, it's super good. Definitely the kind to follow. Um, <clears throat> we did get we did get Sephiroth and Smash. Right, the smash announcement. It's funny because, well, here you go. I'll play some of the gameplay here, as you can see it. But uh, we did get, um, we got, we got like a a letter or like a note. What was like a little envelope or something like that with a little red wax seal uh, that was uh, teased before the event, and everybody was like, you know, by Nintendo, was like, oh, this is going to the Game Awards. I wonder what's in it. Uh, and everyone was like, oh, it looks like a cease and desist letter. <laughs> but yeah, if you're a Smash fan, which there might be some here maybe uh then yeah this is uh this is a great update for you 
There's actually a screenshot here that I got to show because Draven said so. Uh, it's actually it's, it's good in the video somewhere. Here we go. Here we go. Right. Ah, there it is. There it is. I want to actually see it in action. Damn. <laughs> One wing angel goes burn. <laughs> So there you go. Several come. There's how many characters are in Smash now? Smash Ultimate? It's fucking million characters. Oh god, what else? There's such a huge list. Uh let's let's, let's go to Ark. Lots of Advent Child reference in that trailer. Yes, yeah, too many. Too many. Too many characters. Uh so Ark, we did get a couple of Ark announcements, which were pretty surprising. <laughs> we know that Ark is. One of the all-time greatest early access games. <laughs> we know that they sold a lot of copies of this game. Uh, and... Well, now they have Arc 2 coming. Uh, I'm not sure if Arc 1's even out of, uh, out of early access yet, but... We have this beautiful trailer. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here. We'll click around a little bit. Starring, let me back, back up a little bit. Vin Diesel. Subnautica? I didn't see anything for Subnautica. <clears throat> oh, you about early access. Early access. I mean, it was it was an early access joke because it's been they've been early access forever. Um, but yeah, they have this trailer which looks like shit on HD. That must be a screen cap then. Um, <laughs> oh, it is a screen cap. No wonder. And see, so they applied all the profit to the Arc Two trailer. No, no, there's so much more. Arc Two is just Arc out of early access. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Vin Diesel is in the trailer for this. Uh, Vin Diesel is going to be in another project related to Ark, which is a Ark animated series. Which is, uh, I mean, I think JP said it best. It's like, how much money did Ark make? The trailer's really jank, lots of glitchy animation in it. <laughs> well, if it's... <laughs> Ark has a story. It does now, I guess. So... Yeah, what would the story be? I guess they just make it, it's a sandbox. They just make the shit up. They just make it up. The yeah, Ark's got an animated series, but I think the best part about this is, uh, you know, it's animation. It's like, okay, cool. Our animation. So Ark made enough money to afford Vin, bruh. Bruh, 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 bruh. Let's fast forward a little bit. Actually, no, let's let it play. Let's let it play with the music. With the music. Good boy. <laughs> Look at these names. Look at these names! It just keeps going! Everybody! <laughs> Everybody is in this is in this fucking animated series. It's crazy. So we got David Tennant. We got uh, Elliot Page. Uh, we have, uh, Malcolm McDowell. I mean, we, I can name all of them, really. You know, Carl Urban, uh, obviously Russell Crowe and Vin Diesel. Gerard Butler, Michelle Yu, you, you, you? I can remember. Um, yeah, it's just insane. Is the music distorted? It, it might have been. It was kind of loud. Uh, what other series had to change LA Page at the last second? Uh, you know what, maybe. It would just be, it would just be the credits, so it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I actually wonder, uh, what role Elliot... That Elliot Page is gonna play if uh Hmm, that's a great question actually, because I'm sure some of this has already started filming. So hmm. uh Ragnar's what? Going for the human mauer v VA money. You can't see Carl in anything but the boys. Dude, he's been in so much stuff and he's amazing in everything. He is re he is so underrated. God damn it, he's so good. Uh, you see, I'm on I'm on board for Carl Urban calling people cunts in the back of a dinosaur. I mean, he, <laughs> that you okay, yeah. In the boys, that's definitely one of his best best roles for sure. I would love I would love him for him to bring that bring that character uh, to this. Uh, not Dreddy was crapping that bullshit. Martha's just trying to troll for it. He's just trying just trying to get a, a reaction out of me. <laughs> Have you seen the Doom movie? 
Have you have you seen the Doom movie? Carl Urban was great. He was not the problem in that movie. Don't you dare! Don't you dare! <laughs> but he was the best Judge Dredd. Out of the two, I would say, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, he is the only good part of that movie, yes. The new Doom movie? No. Oh, God, that's right. There's a new one. I forgot. Yeah, I don't know if that one actually ever made it to release, but uh, who does Carl Urban play in The Boys? Uh, Billy Butcher. He plays Billy Butcher. And he is, I don't know, I don't know, I didn't read the comic or anything, so I don't really know how his character is in the comic or whatever, but uh, uh, I love his character in the show. Uh, he's, and the character in the show is fucking great. This is fucking great. Well, if it isn't the invisible cunt. <laughs> God, there's so many good lines in that. So many good lines. Um, better than Stallone, for sure. For sure. <clears throat> Say the old Dread comic fan. Oh, as an old, oh, that's fine. I mean, you can you can have your comics. That's fine. I'll watch. I'll watch it for you. It's fine. Perpetually pissed off. Oh man, always, always. I love it. Uh, not the Doom movie. The guys, the first one with the Rock. Yes, the one with the Rock, which I guess nobody's seen, <laughs> which is fine. I remember I actually saw that movie in theaters, and I remember the biggest uh, selling point to us uh, was. Um, oh, you got to go and see the end, man. They got this great FPS scene. And I remember we went and we watched it. We sat through the whole fucking movie. And as a Doom fan, right, none of the shit made sense. Like, none of it. They totally, like, like gutted the, the gutted the story and the plot and everything. And then they uh, turned it into, you know, what, experiments or something. I don't know. But, <clears throat> but the end when they did the first person thing was not a payoff. <laughs> It was not a payoff at all. There was nothing nothing about that made me think, oh, I'm so glad I sat through this whole movie so I can watch the end of this. <sighs> Rock Doom, best Doom. I mean, if we have to compare, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, I refuse to speak of the Doom movie with The Rock. It is bad. Not even can't be bad. Also, they freaking, they, they freaking play with the flashlight mod. Cheaters, that's true, they did. Not as bad as Prince of Persia movie. I have not seen that. Is it really bad? Oh, it's scary. Video game movies make sense. Nine times out of ten, no. You know, Monster. I cut a story from today. Uh, Monster Hunter uh, released in in China and then got axed like immediately because it had a really stupid joke. Uh, it's like, hey, what kind of knees are this? Is a uh, um, assumed a Chinese uh, uh, soldier, right? Well, an American soldier, but a Chinese guy. Um, <clears throat> and he says uh, he's talking to the driver and he says, hey, what kind of knees are these? And he said, oh no, what kind of knees? He said, Chinese. Ha 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 ha. It was a really bad fucking joke. As a dad, okay? As a father. Like, that was a fucking terrible joke. And they got axed. The Chinese government was like, whoa! <laughs> we can't have anybody making really campy and forgettable jokes in a totally forgettable movie about us! So they axed it from the theaters out there. Even dad jokes have standards. Yes, yes, they do. Yes, they do. <clears throat> and finally... Finally, I didn't actually pull the YouTube video for this, actually. Let me go pull it up here. Uh, we did get, and we talked about it a little bit beforehand. I try not to get try, try not to get worked up about this, but uh, we talked about it a little, a little bit before, uh, before the news here. But we did end up getting uh, a surprise announcement. And if you haven't seen it, don't spoil it, chat. Don't look at that top part. We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched. Roger, copy. Eagle Houston, you're a go for landing, over. Not sure station. Unknown vessel approaching. We need first contact protocol. Humanity now stands as partners in the galaxy. Terrible space program three. <laughs> you guys, wrong answers only. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. 
The Reaper, oh yeah, the Reaper Horn definitely gives it away. Absolutely does. Absolutely does. Oh man. Ah, oh, so good. So yeah, we're getting uh, we're gonna get another Mass Effect in like five years, <laughs> in a very long time. Um, Josh and I did a lot. I'm gonna recap some of the shit we said uh, before uh, uh, before stream, but I'm not gonna go as far as we did before stream. Uh, what I will say is that Josh and I uh, we went pretty deep on the ending of Mass Effect Three and all of the. I mean, everybody did like all the assumptions of what really happened, uh, indoctrination theory, all this stuff, and so we went ham on this trailer and <clears throat> a lot of stuff that came out. Sorry, there's been a lot of like tweets and everything from people that work that are working on this project that have kind of clarified a couple stuff. They've asked, they've said there's a lot of hidden stuff in here. So of course we went through and we upped the contrast and all this shit. And um, you know, we, obviously we we're tweeting out like mad last night, all this shit. <clears throat> so what we know, what I'll say, and I won't say too much more. If you want to see more, you can just go read our, our, either Josh or my Twitter feed. But that is Liara. That is an older Liara, and a sorry can uh, live up to a thousand years, so or like around a thousand years. Um, so I think like Samara in Mass Effect Three, I think was like eight hundred years old or something like that. Um, I don't know how old Arya was, but anyway. So uh, we know that's Liara. We know that the voice actress has confirmed, um, basically that she's that. She, that she's going to be returning. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scroll down my feed until you see, ah, <laughs> just a lot of A's. And that's where you start. <laughs> then start scrolling up from there. <clears throat> They're in the prime now. That's right. Cougar. That's where we're getting Cougar. <laughs> Cougar Liara. Oh, man. So, yeah. Um, so, hey, guys, EA here. So we fucked up with Andromeda, but we still want to milk this franchise. So here's Liara, Reaper Horn, N7. Please buy more. Of our trans, dude. I, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. <laughs> so there is, a, there's a lot of stuff in here. Not only did, not only uh, Josh and I went through and uh, you know did a lot of digging and everything. But there's also uh, other folks who were doing just tons and tons of breaks down. Like this person right here actually went through and did a full audio breakdown of um of what of what everything that we hear in the uh, in the video. So. We, we do know that it takes place, uh, obviously, after Mass Effect 3. Uh, we know that it takes place um, maybe around or a little after Andromeda. Uh, but other than that, there's not a whole lot we can really say. There's just not, a lot, not enough info uh, laying around in that, in that trailer. <clears throat> lots of assumptions, lots of theories, lots of all this stuff. But it's, uh, but yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> just analyzing the shit out of it, man. What's going on with Andromeda? I always thought the gameplay of combat looked good. The rest, not so much. I, you know, I've heard it's actually been fixed up pretty well. Freycore actually uh, could probably give you his opinion. He played it at the beginning. Uh, he played all the way through, I think, at the beginning, right? Didn't you say that? Um, when it was like not necessarily the most popular game, but uh, but yeah, maybe it uh, has fixed up since then. Unpopular opinion. I couldn't get through one. Never played any of the others. Well, one is the toughest for some folks because it is a very clunky RPG. I actually like it because uh, you manage a lot of your character there. But a lot of people ended up not liking it, you know, and it's also aged quite a bit. So if you go back and play it, it might be kind of uh, tough. But um, Mass Effect 2 and 3 really start to refine it a lot. I actually do like Mass Effect 1 quite a bit. It feels like a classic RPG to me. Uh, well, our third person RPG. Uh, but uh, Mass Effect 2 and 3 definitely turn it into more of a like controller friendly, console friendly type of uh, experience. There's lots of action. There's lots of like, you know, switching up things, whatever. It just feels like it plays a bit more like an action game and less like a story driven game. Um, kind of like comparing it to like KOTOR, right? Like KOTOR, it feels like uh, uh, Mass Effect 1 feels more like KOTOR than, than Mass Effect 2 and 3 does. So. <clears throat> But if you're gonna pick it up, wait because they have a uh, a remaster coming out. So, so yeah. Let's see, you enjoyed Andromeda. Oh, and enjoyed Andromeda. Yeah, I might go back and play Andromeda again. Uh, I did, I, and, and also read the books um, to kind of just get up to date. There's like a couple new races and stuff like that. The the, the Angorans, I think Angorans, something like that. Um, but they are a race only known to exist in andromeda so i'm um, curious about them and like what they're all about and all that shit but there's a lot of cool shit man there's a lot of cool lore and everything here to unpack and like you know even in that video like there's a lot of stuff in there that you want to go through and just like unpack and you want to know what happened like what happened to all these characters what happened to whatever 
So, yeah, it's just still sad that Andromeda never continued. They left so much out. Ooh, that sucks. Remastered Spring 2021. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> didn't they say they were going to continue the story in comics or something with uh, Andromeda? They may not do that at all, actually. They maybe just have said that and they're just like, eh, well, nobody really cared. And it's true, like, nobody really cared. Like, the game didn't do well, so... I need to learn what happened for, uh, to the love of my life, Garrus. Well, it depends on the decisions that you made. <laughs> As it is with everything else with uh, Mass Effect. So, moving on to the actual winners. The actual winners of awards. Now, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Where we were kind of prepping ourselves to be let down. And, uh, in some cases, I think we will be let down. But we'll start at the bottom. No, doesn't work. Okay, we're gonna start at the bottom. I think there were some. There were some comics. It's still, oh, the, the doesn't work, huh? Okay, page up, page down. Don't work on this page, I guess. Huge letdowns on the winners. Yes. So, but we'll start at the bottom because there's these. I think either they make more sense, or I just don't know enough about them to choose. Right. So if we look at like you know who won best esports team. Well, I didn't watch a lot of. I didn't watch any League or uh, Overwatch or Dota this year or Call of Duty. Um. Yeah, it's been actually a slow for me. I don't know about you guys, but I've watched less esports this year or this uh, pandemic than I have ever. I still watch StarCraft and uh, uh, you know, 2 and Brood War stuff, but not as often as I did, man. Like, I feel like pandemic just took it out of me. Uh, we have uh, best esports host. So if your host is on here, <clears throat> I don't see Taste Tosis on there. Uh, we got best esports game. So now we're getting more familiar territory for some folks. I'm out of the loop, but assuming we're getting there, we're getting to Brian. <laughs> Pump the brakes. <laughs> we're we're going to get there. Uh, so uh, League of Legends won best esports game again. Didn't really watch a whole lot, but I can say that League of Legends got to, you know, they kind of have the esports thing down being one of the biggest, uh, longest running esports games. Uh, and then we scroll up a little bit. We see that we have League of Legends World Championships. So Worlds. Worlds is always a big, huge production. And other, other, I will say, though, that... You know, uh, Katowice and uh, even the Overwatch League Grand Finals, like, you know, they definitely step up production everywhere. Uh, even even with, uh, I think, like, Clash of Clans had, actually, I know Clash of Clans ha had in 2018, I think, um, maybe 2019, uh, they had a huge uh, tournament, which I know sounds weird, but, <laughs> but they had a huge stage and all this crazy stuff. So, yeah, it's like everybody's really stepping up their game. So I had imagined that Worlds, your know, Worlds is definitely one of the biggest and one of the best in terms of production value. Uh, but they have some serious, serious, serious competition coming uh, over the next few, year, few years. Not to mention, you know, League of Legends is not necessarily going to get popular over the years. It's going to eventually wane. Uh, we have best esports coach went to Danny Zonic uh, Sorensen. Uh, then we have Best Esports Athletes. I uh, went to uh, Hugh Showmaker Sue for League of Legends. Lots of League of Legends all over the place. Lots of League of Legends wins. Uh, best Debut Game, which I thought was a real... This is a good one, actually. Um, and that's Phasmophobia. Now, I would have voted Phasmophobia, of course. Uh, I did play Carrion. And Carrion is a very interesting game. It lacked a little bit of depth for me. I actually recorded Indie for Breakfast for it, and it got corrupted, and I was really upset about that. Um, but uh, Phasmo absolutely deserves this. Uh, and I feel like it's... It, I mean, it's still de developing, so maybe we'll win some stuff next year. Who knows? Good on those guys for Phasmophobia. Yes, which, by the way, they just released a prison level. So a prison map. Uh, I don't know anything about it, so... But yeah, Corrupted for Breakfast. Yeah, thank you. Um, content creator of the year, we had a selection here, mostly, mostly like, you know, Twitch, Twitch streamers, Tim the Tatman, uh, the, but Valk Valkyrie, uh, she is actually a YouTube streamer, a YouTube streamer, uh, and she ended up winning. She actually plays with like Disguise uh, Toast and all of them. She recently started playing Among Us, uh, which, uh, helped catapult her quite a bit. Um, but yeah, so she actually ended up winning. I actually I went I went on Twitter to kind of to kind of see what people were saying and don't do that <laughs> don't do that it's it's ugh, man the people are fucking salty why did XQC get it it's like are you fucking serious right now <laughs> like that's not how this game works man Tim Shed I won after the Fall Guys losing streak yeah yeah fanboy wars oh yeah exactly it's it's and it is vicious it is vicious and sexist of course of course it's sexist people are like oh it's, it's all the simps all the simps are basically ruining the award shows it's like dude come on <sighs> all right scrolling up best multiplayer 
We knew this had to happen. We knew this had to happen because Animal Crossing was ass. Their their multiplayer is garbage, okay? Uh, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, there's no way that Fall Guys was going to be among us in this category. There's just no way. There's no fucking way. Valorant is over there, too. For those that play that. Uh, you see, the only thing SVC should win is more bans and fines. Honestly, I only heard of Tim, but glad a female got the spotlight. Yep, I would have been mad if Animal Crossing won. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so Among Us won. Well, well, well deserved. Uh, best sports racing. I'm actually surprised at this one. I think I just assumed that like FIFA or like NBA would win, but I know that FIFA, um, and I think maybe we covered on the news uh, before, but FIFA actually, oh, I think we did. Yeah, that's right. They, they, they were uh, under a lot of criticism because... FIFA 21 was, I think, literally identical to FIFA 20. And the review that like Kotaku or The Verge or somebody put up was like, uh, what did they say? They said, uh, since nothing changed in the game except for the roster, we're just going to repost our review from the last one. <laughs> they didn't even waste their time. They're just like, nothing changed. We've confirmed. We're going to go ahead and just, uh, you know. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, sports fans don't care. Yeah, they don't care. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of stuff that you could really change and innovate and all that stuff. It's not like NFL Blitz when that came out and that was like amazing. Uh, there's not a lot of innovation, I guess. So that was a big thing on Discord last night. The Among Us won. It's a 2018 game. Oh, see? Yeah, I'm sure somebody's going to jump on that, but who cares? Like, it's, it's totally unfair to like categorize an indie game that came out, struggled for two years, and finally got the exposure that it deserved to say, well, on a technicality, you don't deserve it uh and i think that could be said about a lot of games uh period because games games are not like movies games don't don't get not all games get a huge marketing budget and they do a huge push and they go you know get put out to every you know to everyone to play and all that stuff all this you know with this big hurrah like they don't they don't all get that especially at an indie game like among us so I think that in this field, in this industry, we can absolutely give them a bit of leeway when it comes to that, or a lot of leeway in some cases. So, yeah, no, I think Among Us is fine to be on this uh, be on this roster. Um, <clears throat> best sim strategy, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm actually surprised to see that I, the XCOM Chimera was on here. Uh, I mean, it was a good game, but like, were we really that short on? Like, XCOM Chimera Squad was a good game. Like, I liked it, but I didn't think it was, like... I mean, do we only have two, like, strategy games that came out this year? Uh, maybe those are the top two that made the cut. Sure. Um, what, is, what is Desperados, though? I don't actually... Is, is that a turn base? I actually don't know what this one is. If it is, I'm gonna have to go play it. Um, hardcore XCOM fans didn't like it. Yeah. Like I said, it was good. It was fun, but... Crusader Kings got robbed. Robbed. I don't know, man. Microsoft Flight Simulator. My friend was like flying over my house and sending me like pictures and shit, which is really weird. Uh, <laughs> yes, turn base. Okay. Well, I got some work to do. Uh, best family game went to Animal Crossing. No surprise. No surprise there. Uh, best fighting game, Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate uh, versus. Yeah, sure. What I, you know? One Punch Man being up there. I saw. I saw. I think it was trending actually for a period of time. The One Punch Man. Uh, the game was not deserving at all of being up here. And this is this is like amongst the fighting game community. They were saying that there was like, there's no reason for that game to be up here. Uh, Desperados is also strategy. It's not turn-based, but more execute with pausing options. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> Monkey Wagon, real time with action. Okay, cool. Oxygen is released this year. Uh, it should be on there. Yeah, it should be on there, huh? What the hell? I see best role playing with the Final Fantasy VII a remake. This was a toss up. I mean, there's a bunch of great games that came out. Genshin Impact was had a, had. A, I think Genshin Impact probably got snubbed on everything, uh, despite it being such a huge and remarkable game. Um, especially being able to play it on basically all in all you know uh, platforms, pretty much. But yeah, I mean, look at this list. Like, this is a tough one, man. Like, these are all good games. You know, like how do you pick one? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> See, I thought, uh, yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought Jay would win that as well. Uh, best action adventure went to. Now we're starting to get into the get into the good stuff, right? Best action adventure. We had Valhalla. We had uh, Miles Morales, Ori. We had Star Wars Jedi, Ghost of Tsushima, and it went to Last of Us Two. Best action game. Hades. Hades ends up taking it over over Doom Eternal. Good. 
<laughs> Good. Hades is a fucking solid game. Real solid game. Uh, innovation and accessibility. Now, this one actually generated a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of uh, um, vitriol. So, <clears throat> what it means is that if you're deaf or blind, you could play Last of Us Part Two from beginning to end with no issues whatsoever. And that is a very, very, very important thing. Um, imagine, imagine not being able to play a game because you're, you know, or not be able to experience something that so many millions, hundreds of millions of people can experience, you know, every single day, simply because there's not accessibility options for you. Um, uh oh, hold on a second. I think my fridge is actually coming. I'll be so mad. No, I don't think it's actually on the way. It just progressed. Okay, good. Whew. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Boy, these motherfuckers show up unannounced. I'm gonna be so mad. Who's your fridge? <sighs> or colorblind? Yeah. Uh, the fear of missing out. Exactly, exactly. So the best VR went to Half-Life Alex. There's no question about that whatsoever. I didn't. I haven't played any of these other games, but there's no question whatsoever that that is deserved. Uh, best community support. Um, best community support went to Fall Guys. I think this is basically like best Twitter account, maybe. Um, so Fall Guys. Uh, let's see, best mobile game among us again. This again, another another like surprising, not surprising, um, because Genshin Impact again is such a uh, uh, was such a such a big game, um, and plays so well on mobile. I, you know, it's funny. I, I I talk about Genshin Impact as if I had played it. I've never played the game, but I I watched other people play it. I watched my friend play it uh, while I was over at his place, and I I've seen I've seen what it can do, and I've seen what kind of game it is, and it's impressive, it's absolutely impressive. Um. Genshin is best on uh, on PC. My waifus, exactly, yeah. But the point is that you could just switch. You just play on PC and then switch to your phone and play it in bed. Pokemon Cafe Mix is on there. It's not even worth being up there for best mobile game. I, I didn't even know. I don't even know what that game is. <laughs> best indie game went to Hades. Splunky 2 is up there. Spirit Fair. I, I think I played Spirit. No, no, I didn't play Spirit. No, I played nothing. Uh, anyways, uh, Fall Guys is on. Or Fall Guys. Fuck, I'm never going to not do that. Uh, Fall Guys is up there as well. Uh, but Hades ends up taking it. Going up a little more. Best ongoing went to No Man's Sky. Over, I mean, I felt like that was, for me, that's deserving. Uh, I would say a second, a good close second would be like Destiny 2. But No Man's Sky, again, you can't quite. This, this has to be the end of No Man's Sky winning awards. Like, they had a shit launch, right? They overpromised and severely underdelivered. They've been working their asses off over the years to develop the content that they promised and to continue developing well beyond what we had imagined for the game. Um, but I think we're done giving them awards. I mean, I, Sean Murray did a great job of saving, uh, for me, saving uh, saving the game. Uh, but I think we could go ahead and call it 2020. That's it. The game was launched like 2015 or something, man. Um, I think I don't even know. <laughs> it's about time No Man's Sky got recognized. Yeah, I, I, once, I, I thought it won some stuff last year, though. The Animus uh, guy's face where they won it, he didn't expect it. Oh, I, I didn't see that. Did they fix VR yet? I don't know. I don't know. I did play uh, it in VR, and it was uh, it was fine. It was fine. Games for Impact typically it's very narrative driven. Uh, I haven't played any of these games, so I couldn't tell you uh, how these are uh, how these uh, um, stack. But uh, tell me why ends up winning. Uh, best performance went to Laura Bailey as Abby in The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, she was up against uh, one of her co-stars in The Last of Us Part Two, and of course, uh, goes to Shima, uh, Hades, uh, and uh, Miles Morales. So, see, he was taking a sip of his beer when they announced NMS is the winner. Oh, that's fucking great. Really? Okay, now I gotta find it. Hold on a second. Now we gotta find it. There's no way I'm gonna be able to not play that. Let me see. Sean Murray Game Awards. Uh-huh. Let me see. Hold on. We're gonna... Quick detour here. Quick tangent. Let's there see. There you go. Ongoing game, which recognizes... Call of Duty. Yep, yep, yep. All right, well, now it's time to reveal the winner. The nominees are joining us here. Hi, guys. All right, here we go. Uh, Sean Murray's the on the right there. Is the Game Award goes to No Man's Sky. Um, I was not expecting that. Uh, amazing. <laughs> it's normally, Twitch is right, Jeff. It's normally Fortnite. It's always Fortnite that beats us. Uh, shit, uh, thank you so much. Um, 
we're really lucky. You know, we get to come to work every day and make games. No Man's Sky is such a wonderful game to work on, you know. Um, it's not always easy, though. Uh, so moments like this, they mean a lot, you know. This means a lot to me, means a lot to the team. Thank you so much. Thank you to the community for continuing to support us. Thanks. That was a very that was a very Sean Murray reaction there. Like this this when I think about how he reacts to literally anything, it's always it's always this like um, I was not a man where he kinda like kinda of looks to the side or whatever. Um, it's a very it's a very Sean Murray way of responding to something. Uh, amazing. That right there. That's <laughs> that's like his tick or something. Uh, so good. Good for them. Good for them. Alright, so we have other games though. So uh, the deer in the headlights look, yeah. They got the Destino coming at all. Yeah, I like how he calls it. He's like, usually it's Fortnite that beats us. So, best performance went to, uh, Laura Bailey. We already covered this. So, Laura Bailey, uh, Laura Bailey as, uh, uh, Abby in Last of Us Part 2. Best audio design went to Last of Us Part 2. Best, uh, score and music went to Final Fantasy VII Remake. They beat out Last of Us Part 2. Um... You know what? This this had to be a really, really, really tough category because I mean, Hades, great, great audio, great soundtrack. Uh, Ori, Will of the Wisps. I did not play Will of the Wisps, but if it's anything like the first one, I mean, that's got to be a tough call. Uh, Doom Eternal, because it's composed by Mick Gordon. I mean, that was plagued with all kinds of controversy, uh, but still, audio wise, it still lives up. You know, maybe I don't know about the soundtrack necessarily. It's still good, um, but uh, but audio in terms of like, you know. Impact in the game it still works. Uh, imagine if Cyberpunk was in time for this year's VGAs. That's gonna all be next year. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is gonna end up being a uh, a next year game for sure. Uh, best art direction went to Ghost of Tsushima. They beat out uh, basically the same as the previous one. <laughs> uh, best narrative went to Last of Us Part Two for outstanding storyline, storytelling, and narrative development in a game. Uh, Doom Ori or Hades for music. Yeah, all of them were fantastic. Um, but yeah, so best narrative goes to Last of Us Part 2. Which, I mean, I don't know. I, like, looking at Hades, it's like, Hades is fun. It's, it's a fun game. I don't know if it's necessarily as deep, uh, deeply driven in terms of story as a game like Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, or Last of Us Part 2. I feel like those games are much more story-oriented, where Hades leans a little bit more on the action with like some you know some interesting story and you know dialogue and everything that happens as you play. Um, of course, maybe I need to play it more to unlock some more of that story, but we'll see. So Last of Us 2 ends up winning again. Best game direction uh, over the same group, basically, except for Half-Life Alex is in there. Uh, it's tough for a VR game to win a ton of awards because VR is still, is, is obviously not at the level as, you know, PC, console, uh, mobile. It's not there yet. So the fact that it's nominated for a lot of stuff is a good thing. Right, uh, that's still a huge feather in their cap because it's a fucking VR game. Limit, yeah, exactly, limited accessibility. So uh, the fact that it's getting so many nomina nominations is it's good. That's good news for VR. Uh, game of the year. This has got a number of them, uh, a number of good games, uh, but Last of Us Two ended up taking it. So game of the year ends up going to Last of Us Two. This is and this. I mean, we called this like a couple weeks ago already, right? We already knew that Last of Us Two was going to sweep a lot of this stuff. Uh, I don't have, I don't have a uh, uh, what is it? What is it called? A horse in this race or whatever? I didn't. I have not played Last of Us uh, either of the games extensively. The first one I played briefly, uh, so I can't really comment on what does what it deserves or what it doesn't deserve. But I have played Animal Crossing a lot. I have played Hades a lot. I have played Doom Eternal a lot. I have played Final Fantasy Remake. Um, not a lot, like 16 hours. Um, and all of those are really good games. They're really good. I would say if I had to pick one, if I had to pick one game, and maybe this is just because it's 2020 and because of the shit that we've been through, I would say it's Animal Crossing. That would have been my pick for this one. Uh, Animal Crossing was one of those games I played every single night to help me relax and go to bed. Uh especially at the beginning of all this nonsense that we've been dealing with, especially here in the States. I know some of you guys in other countries are like, you know, going out to bars and shit, having a good time, but you know, <laughs> we can't quite do that here. Um, so yeah, Animal Crossing definitely got me through some rough nights. And uh, so for me, Animal Crossing would have taken it very personal for me, but uh, 
you know, maybe a second, a second, close second would be probably Hades. Hades is such a solid all around game. Beautiful, great audio, great action. Uh, yeah, great uh, um, writing. Just really good. Uh, Animal Crossing should have on fucking celebrities were playing it because they couldn't go anywhere either. Yeah, too bad Hades is a roguelike, which means I'll never play it. It's, you know what, the the way they progress, it's not like an old roguelike where, like, everything just kind of resets. You're, you're kind of playing this loop. Uh, it's it definitely more of the roguelite instead of a roguelike, as I rule. There's a lot of evolving story, a lot of evolving story. A lot of roguelikes have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, progression built into it. So that way you don't feel like you're just spinning your wheels. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, this is, there's a lot of narrative that kind of gets, uh, you know, um, unlocked and released as you progress there's so much voice acting there is an unfucking believable amount of voice acting in this game there's almost nothing to read <laughs> there's almost nothing to read it's insane um Hades is far more forgiving over games like Risk of Rain 2 yeah and Risk of Rain 2 doesn't really have like a lot of narrative right uh, I would have hated it, but I would have been okay with AC winning just because there was so much going on with it. Like late night show, that one guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. The late night show thing. Prefer Dead Cells over Hades, to be honest. Well, that's fine. Uh, you also don't think that Carl Urban made a great Judge Dredd. So we're all, you know, you could just be wrong in multiple things. It's totally fine, Martha. Dead Cells is an amazing game, though. I'm, I, that, you're totally right. That's a fantastic game. Uh, but again, you know, like when you look at an all-arounder, you know, Hades is an all-arounder. It's a rogue. It's a roguelite that is mainstream. Uh, that is going to, I mean, we're so, so, so far into the timeline of roguelites. Um, now we've been playing them for like, what's heavily for like seven years or something that to finally see one nominated and get tons of awards like this, like this is, this is a big deal. It's a good all around game. It's not just best action game. It's like nominated for all kind nominated for game of the year for fuck's sake like that's fantastic so yeah hades is absolutely deserved to have all the nominations and all of the uh and all the awards that it actually took home so someone made a late night show on ac yeah it's pretty good final fantasy 7 rematch and that's that's totally fine yeah i mean yeah if, if this is a tough list this is a very very hard list here <laughs> like to choose one of these like this is i i would love to have seen the actual numbers uh in terms of like how close they were but this was definitely this is a hard list to choose from uh animal talking with gary uh Witta. thank you so much agrimonia uh don't even get me started with what they did to anderson in uh oh man i don't remember uh see doom is the only one of that list that was disappointed if it won oh yeah you know what if we want to talk about from that perspective disappointed if they won i would put doom up there doom eternal doom eternal was good it was fine it was a great action game uh, I don't really feel like it innovated over uh, the 2016 Doom. I think it was just it was more of the same, which is not a bad thing. But if you want to look at, if you look at the other games up here, like in terms of like, well, I don't know about Last of Us Part 2 again, but uh, in terms of like innovating a genre uh, or remastering a genre. <laughs> but no, Final Fantasy VII Remake is, is that's a huge huge reimagining of the game um animal crossings again huge difference between animal crossings new horizons versus new leaf uh ghost of tsushima just a phenomenal game all around and of course hades we've already talked about that extensively so yeah doom eternal just felt like it was a good game yeah it's a great game uh, more of the same but still a great game uh doom uh doom eternal was to doom 2016 as doom 2 was to doom same stuff slightly improved still fun in the end yeah totally absolutely absolutely and Doom Eternal is actually being released on uh, on uh, Switch today, I believe. So, yeah, today you can uh, go and download that for the Switch if you want. I'm actually very curious how that plays. I'm not going to pick it up for it, but, uh, yeah, I'm sure it's probably pretty uh, pretty, pretty close. For enjoying, yeah. Too bad they don't release the numbers for this stuff. I would love to see what the numbers were between these two, but you know, no, no award show is, is going to tell you how close they got. Um, I'm going to have to binge watch some animal talking now. Oh, there you go. Gonna have to try Hades sometimes, see if it changes my mind. Yeah, give it a shot. Give it a shot. I, th I think it actually might even be on like either in a bundle or maybe on Game Pass or uh, what's well, on Epics. So I don't know. Um, but it's I, what is available on most platforms, I think. So yeah, give it a shot. It's a it's a it's a good game. Wherever you could pick it up, definitely give it a shot. Um, whoo! That was all just the Game Awards. 
It's on sale on Steam at the moment. Oh, there you go. PC and Switch. There it is. Switch now. Yeah. Uh, that was all just the Game Awards. We still have just a couple more things we want to talk about today, if we can. Um, we have Cyberpunk 2077 was released. And with it came a whole bunch of, you know, little issues and stuff, like some controversies and everything. We'll go and cover some of the controversy stuff real quick. So, uh, first off, before the game release, we got notice that there are some, uh, some epileptic, uh, epilepsy insensitive scenes in the game that, um, that was, you know, that was uh, something that should have been addressed. But what was really interesting was that when you look at it, it says uh, the headset fits over. Here, here's what it says. It says the headset fits over both eyes and features a rapid onslaught of white and red blinking LEDs, uh, much like the actual device neurologists use in real life to trigger a seizure when they need to trigger one for diagnosis purposes. If not modeled off of the IRL design, it's a very spot on coincidence. And because of that, this uh, is one aspect I would personally advise you to avoid altogether. And so... It says not only does Cyberpunk not have any accessibility options for the people with epilepsy, it contains a mechanic which is specifically designed to cause seizures. So that was, that seemed pretty, uh, you know, seemed pretty, it was as if you can't, if you don't have to see if you had a patch fix. Okay, yeah, so I'm not going to cover the article, but they, they're probably going to fix all of this shit that we're talking about today. They're just assuming they're going to fix it, okay? Especially the ones that they're tweeting about. Like, for example, the fact that, let me see, they had, uh, First, on the 9th, the, 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 was the, the day of launch. Um, so it's a hospital for the lesson to, to lessen it, modify the flashing effect and brain dances to reduce the risk of inducing uploaded symptoms. Yeah, I, I figured they were gonna they were gonna fix that quickly. Of course, the effect has been smoothed out. The flash has reduced frequency and magnitude. Fantastic. Yeah, it's like they were saying it was pretty intense. Um, and actually, you know, this little clip right here, this little screenshot, is where you get you have your first brain dance in the game. This is very very early in the game. Uh, so yeah, this is. Um, that that was that was the device basically, uh, so we know that we've had a long standing issue of DMCA problems with um, with just like making content in general, and lately it's been picked up a lot, and we've talked about that extensively on this show, uh, and so Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven has a streamer friendly mode. Uh, on top of their nude filter, so there's like two streamer friendly modes, uh, but this one will disable any copyrighted music. Unfortunately. There are a couple of scenes, uh, two specifically, where they said that they have um, a, a music that was not cleared. So people were getting DMCA. Now, I don't have any tweet or record anywhere of anybody saying that they were specifically nailed for this. Um, so maybe they got that in early, en early enough to uh, prevent anybody, you know, any too many issues from people that were uh, uh, getting DMCA. So. But, as expected, the more people that play the game, there's so much game there, there's so much music there, there's so much stuff to uncover. It says it has come to our attention that there are additional instances of the in the game which might put a DMCA strike on your channel. Fix is on the way, but until then, we'd like to ask you to mute music in the game settings entirely. We are very sorry for the inconvenience caused. This is a fucking joke, man. Like, and I'm not saying it's their fault. Because there's a lot of music in this game, and it's it's got to be tough to go through and make sure everything not just is cleared for that for the the uh, streamer friendly version, um, but also like just, just every element every element of game that contains music to make sure that they're using the right music that they're flagged correctly or whatever. So when that when that mode is enabled, that it's going to switch. Right. And obviously, in some cases, it didn't switch. Uh, there are some instances, too, where I noticed that uh, when you have, uh, you know, the 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 DMCA friendly mode enabled, uh, like in the radio, like when I switch radio stations, sometimes it doesn't play music. And I wonder, like, in those situations, if it's because it's choosing a song ID that doesn't exist because it can't be played because of DMCA filter. So clearly there are some like pockets that they haven't quite reached into yet in terms of like figuring out like uh and correcting some of these issues cyber launch is the biggest beta test on twitch ever on twitch yes uh somehow i like to see millions uh got dmca curious to see what will happen yeah i mean i don't know again i don't have any i didn't see anything but i didn't really dig too much to see if anybody had actually gotten a copyright strike for this. I, I haven't gotten any copyright issues from the game. Uh, and we played it for two or three days, two days, I think. Uh, so I haven't had any issues myself. Now, 
you know, there was another issue, not necessarily related to uh, to Cyberpunk, but related to Fortnite. They had an event that happened uh, a couple weeks ago, or a week and a half ago. And it says, if you stream the Fortnite Nexus War event and you want to be cautious about DMCA risk from the music in the events, consider exporting slash downloading and then deleting any related VODs or clips. So, and this is happening all over the place. This is definitely a Twitch versus the RIAA issue. And they really, 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 really need to get this shit resolved. They have to get this shit resolved. Uh, I've been saying this now for like a month and a half. Like, they have to get this resolved, man. This is a fucking joke at this point. Um, in terms of how the game... In terms of how the game is performing, we have some day one numbers here from uh, Scapes, my buddy Scapes. And he says that Cyberbug 2077 day one on Twitch, 1.13 million peak um, concurrent viewers. That's a lot of viewers. Uh, 1.03 billion viewer minutes, 29.8 thousand hours streamed, 4.2 thousand peak channels. The top five audience and share of viewer minutes was Shroud, XQC, uh, Ruby5, Co Carnage, uh, Alan Zoka. Now, um, I thought that XQC couldn't get his key to work or something because he was like copying these special keys that they got to be able to stream early uh, and he was copying the space after but he didn't realize it and he kept failing and he ended up ending the stream or something um, but but this is oh my twitch sense of me co-stream the game awards which played a ton of DNC because me oh yeah I'm sure I'm sure yeah uh, how many of those hours were downloads of the free game uh, of the game were downloads of the game, but this this is viewer this is viewership on Twitch. This is viewership on Twitch. Um, but anyways, yeah. So so this is pretty good numbers, like pretty significant numbers. Now, uh, on uh, SteamDB.info, we actually can see how those numbers correlate with the actual players. How many viewers watch the game get downloaded? Oh oh oh, oh. that's what we're gonna we're gonna talk about right now. Actually, I'm gonna answer your question right now. Lots, lots, and lots. Take a look at this chart right here. So this chart uh, shows the uh, the red line is your viewers. The blue line is your players. So you can see there's, you know, leading up to it on December 9th in the morning, early, uh, there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people playing or watching and nobody playing. Very, very few. Basically nobody playing. And then you have this huge uptick where finally everybody's able to get on and start playing. And then what happens to viewership? Viewership basically tanks. So it does this interesting kind of loop here. And I didn't look at the time to see like what this is UTC, right? So this would be like, this would be like early in the morning US time. So I guess people are like waking up and then watching. And I think that US viewership like easily trumps other, other you know, countries, uh, viewership. So maybe that's the case. Um, stocks analysis. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. You guys watch me download it for an hour and a half. Exactly. People realize the computer can't run the game, <laughs> but yo, know, this is, um, this, this is reflective of my experience actually, you know, like we had a ton of people hanging out, watching me download the game. And then once I started playing the game, like everybody left, like it was the lowest viewership I've had for basically anything I've streamed in the past, like several months was, was cyberpunk because nobody wants to get spoiled everybody wants to play it so you see once viewership takes off uh then we see uh you know we see you know, you know uh uh or sorry once players uh you know player numbers take off then we see viewership start to tank and so and I, that's you know like i've said it while I was streaming it's like i totally understand like people don't want to get spoiled like there's there's a ton of story there uh and you know overall the game's got just jam-packed with tons of side quests and all that shit so yeah people don't want to get spoiled on this stuff um it felt lonely afterwards <laughs> people uh let's see can't confirm i have avoided gameplay streams Abs yeah and i totally understand i have a two to four streams muted daily since uh since cyberpunk 2077 launched well it's great you know that when you mute the streams on twitch it doesn't count as a view but if you mute the tab it does just letting you know um so yeah, like some really, really good numbers for Cyberpunk 2077. Absolutely huge, huge numbers. And also interesting to see how this, uh, how it looks compared to the uh, players. Seeing the viewership tank makes sense. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, muted tabs. Yes. Oh shit. Well, yeah. Right click on your tab at the very top. I'll show, I'll show you right now. Right click on your tab right here and then go to mute site. Boom. And that's it. So that's how you do it. So if you don't want to hear me talk. But you want to support me or any other Twitch streamer, uh, you could do that just like that. 
I uh, just learned you can mute tab. There you go. Yeah, no problem. Do you guys know you could pin tabs too? Did you guys know in Canary, which is uh, Google's like uh, uh, like beta testing early access platform, uh, you can actually group tabs and you could like they're like color coded. So if you have like a website, like I have like you know uh, uh, like certain websites that I keep like grouped together, and they end up like creating these little groups now. So yeah. Mom, you for Mike P. <laughs> Mom, you Mike P. Uh, so yeah, the, the in in Canary they have a bunch of cool features like that too. I don't know if that's is that actually in. Uh, yeah, it's not in live yet, but it's probably coming soon. Still uses a lot of yeah yeah. Chrome is still not the best browser, <laughs> but it's still the one that we all use for some reason. You use Firefox and have those features a year earlier. Thank you, Merv Zing. Exactly, exactly. I don't know what's wrong with all of us, honestly. I don't know. So. Moving on, this is the longest episode ever, which is fine because they have a lot of news to catch up on. This one was actually super interesting. Um, so there was an acquisition recently where uh, Daybreak was bought up entirely by uh, a Swedish game company called uh, Inad Global 7. Let's call them EG7. Um, and so what happened was they provided, they had to provide a ton of uh, data to their investors, which means... We got a ton of data on Daybreak games. Daybreak, previously, Sony Entertainment, or whatever that could use for SEO. Um, I think in between there, it might have been called something else, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, we're talking about EverQuest, we're talking about DCUO, we're talking about Lotro, we're talking about Planicide, we're talking about those games, right? So the fact that they had to divulge all these, number, uh, all these numbers to their investors um, means that we got to see how many people are playing certain games so i will ask you guys we'll start with let me see how many monthly active users do you think that eq that everquest is getting everquest one monthly active users members okay monthly active users I see 20k i see one no idea anymore i don't blame you at all 1 million, 4K, uh, 100K. Oh, Ryle's getting close. 37K. EverQuest still alive. 60K. Ooh, you guys are getting so close. 70K. Oh, God, you're 75K. You guys are right there. So EverQuest is getting 82,000 players a month. They're pulling in year to date $11.5 million. EverQuest 1 is making $11.5 million alone look at dcuo dcuo has four hundred and nineteen thousand monthly active users this is wow like seriously this is yeah you could say wow this is very surprising um some of these numbers uh they're pulling in 26.7 million dollars a year from dcuo yeah not yeah not wow <laughs> i mean wow <laughs> <laughs> holy wow holy crap whatever how is everquest one still around but they shut down star wars because they broke star wars galaxies because <laughs> they broke it that's why what happened with eq2 boy i wonder just didn't resonate with the fans i guess uh but no but still though even that game is pulling in 6.5 million dollars a year so yeah these are really 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 crazy numbers not what I expected to see uh, from from this, and that's the whole point of this article. Actually, going over the breakdown of some of these um, you know, monthly active users, the the earnings and all that stuff. But yeah, Daybreak Games is not a company that's not making money, uh, or at least not bringing in money, I should say. And they have tons and tons of players overall. I mean, what are we looking at? Do they actually have total monthly active for everybody? Uh, let me see. So here it is. They brought over twenty six million dollars uh, a year. So significant, significant. And a surprise. Yeah, I wanted to show you guys. It's a surprise. Uh, wait, EG7 also recently purchased Piranha Games, the creators of MechWare Online and MechWare 5. So yeah, okay. So they're they're like just uh, collecting collecting all of the, I guess, a bunch of game companies, huh? Hmm. DCUO, one of the few console MMOs. It is, actually. That's right. Is it? Is it on... Um, I mean, is it updated for like all current gen and everything? I mean, I know current gen can run old stuff. I guess it wouldn't really matter, but yeah. Wow, I wonder what that game looks like now because I remember that game looked amazing back then, but it was highly stylized though. So I wonder if it's uh, one of those games that even 20 years from now will still look good because it's cartoony, you know? Um, 
Ultimate Online reported to have roughly 300,000 active subs too. I'm surprised Ultimate Online only has that much. <laughs> Actually, what are, do we have access to RuneScape's numbers? I want to see RuneScape's numbers. I'm sure that's probably insane. Uh, 87 tagline is the new way to create, which uh, I guess means buy things. That's right, new way to create, just buy it. You made this, I made this. So, in closing today, if you are like me and slowly putting together a PC over the holidays, choosing the absolute worst time ever to do so, you're going to have to buy yourself a video card. And if you're looking for a certain type of video card, you're probably, well, if you're looking for any video card, it's pretty hard to find some. It just got even more difficult to find the 3090s because over $300,000 of graphics cards have been stolen from a factory in China. So, the uh, the scalper price of a 3090 just went up, like, double. <laughs> because of this. I'm sorry. I know! Isn't that crazy? That's like 10 cards! <laughs> I got it, Martha! Same time! Same time! ha <laughs> Uh, the triads got him. <laughs> they just like scout. You know, like that's still. It's like they said, it's forty cards. It's right there. Forty cargo boxes of cards were stolen from MSI warehouse in the early hours of December seventh. Uh, and like that's there's a lot of cards, man. There's a lot of cards. This is this is not um this is not like just a couple of just you know dudes just oh yeah it's, this cards to steal is crates like. They're gonna have to do something with these things in order to turn a profit on. Oh, well, anything's a profit and sell one, but uh, but still, like, you need distribution for this. This this is a lot of cards that are out in the market now, on the black market, I should say. Some Bitcoin miners got some sick upgrades. Yeah, yeah, huh? Yeah, given to the gold mine, gold farmers in Wild Classic. Well, it's probably Bitcoin miners makes more sense. Absolutely, especially. I mean, Bitcoin mining, any kind of coin, not say Bitcoin, but just uh, any kind of uh, um, virtual coin mining is. Uh, is going to be better benefited when you get the hardware for free. <laughs> it definitely supports your bottom line when you're not paying anything for the hardware. For fuck's sake. MSI was already caught scalping the cards and releasing on the eBay with their own stock. So yeah, that's the other thing too, right? We talked about that. MSI was busted for um you know putting their own cards up on on eBay through a uh through a through a show company, right? Through another company. And uh and so it's like did they really get stolen or <laughs> or are they just like, oh my God, they're just gone. <laughs> and that's it. So yeah, it was an inside job. I know exactly. It might've been, it might've been actually, I'm sure the internet's pretty sleuthy. I'm sure they'll figure it out if it is, the, if that is the case, but that's it for the news. A long one. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out. Thank you, chat, for hanging out for all this time. I appreciate it. It was a long episode. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Follow me, aka Mike B, aka Mike B Photo. Uh, you can follow chat right here. Thank you so much again for hanging out. You hear about the six year old kid who got banned for it? Nah, I don't care about the kid. Fuck them kids. That's it. 